Hey everybody, so we're talking about Traveler, right? Um, what is Traveler? So a Traveler RPG is the original, the OG sci-fi RPG, right? Um, it was released back in 1977, the same time as Star Wars. So if you think about that, like... It, it predates Blade Runner, it predates like Aliens. I mean, I think Alien came out in 1978 or I'm not sure, but it, you know, Dune and like all of these it, Star Wars, all that stuff, like this is gonna be before that, right? And, uh, and then Traveler is also, it's um, noted as like an influence on things like Firefly. Like, supposedly, Firefly, um, Joss Whedon ran a campaign of, of Traveler for his friends in college. And that's where Firefly came on. Or, or where Firefly was based on his campaign that he ran for his friends in college. Right? So, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a big deal, right? It's, it's a really, really old RPG, but it still stands up. And unlike something like Dungeons and Dragons, it hasn't changed that much over all the years. Right, about that. The original, uh, the original first edition of Traveler was published by Games Designers Workshop back in 1977. And supposedly um, Mark Miller and some of these other people who were working at Games Designers Workshop, not Games Workshop, different, you know, US-based company, but they were also making war games at the time, like uh, same as TSR. Um, they were all in the office, and instead of making the games that they were supposed to be playing, or supposed to be making, they were playing Dungeons and Dragons, and they were like, we should make an RPG, but we should do a sci-fi one. And, um, and that's where the Traveler system comes from. So Traveler is really different from, well, D&D is a good example. Um, D&D is like the original level-based, class-based system where you're like, I'm going to be a a fighter and then at first level I have this many hit points and then my strength is here and then you know I, I know that at level two I, I get to roll a d10 and then I get this many more hit points and stuff like that so there's no there's no levels in Traveler. Um, Traveler is completely uh, skill based so you you can sort of level up your character by putting points into their their skills. And um, it's also a 2d6 system. So um, the, uh, the, the 2d6 system, 2d6 is going to be a much smoother bell curve than a d20. If you think about it like a d20, the the chances of rolling a 20 are the same as rolling a 1. It's 1 in 20 versus 2d6. The, the combinatorics, I don't know what it is. I think that there's like 11 possible combinations. Or I forget what it is, but there's a lot of different combinations that lead to a 7. Um, there's, there's, you know, 1 in 6, 5 in 2, 3 in 4, and, and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of you end up with a, a much smoother distribution where a lot of the roles are going to be somewhere m closer to the middle. And um, if you have a character who is built a certain way to, to use their skills in a certain way, like say that they're good at piloting or say that they're good at being charismatic or they're a really good gunslinger or something like that, um, if you put the points into it, they're going to succeed. They're going to do what they were built to do where their points are allotted more consistently because a 2d6 system is a smoother bell curve, basically. Um, 
there is no levels. Um, basically, how it works is that over time, your uh, your characters are going to just get better at their their skills. They don't. They're never going to say like, "Oh, I hit level three. I'm going to put this many." Um, you know, I, I rolled this dice and now I have this many more hit points, right? And similar, like, or, or I guess different from games like D&D, you're never just going to shrug off a bunch of laser blasts. It doesn't matter what level, you know, gunslinger or whatever you are. You're never just going to be able to take a bunch of laser blasts unless you're in some kind of a mech suit or, a, you know, a gravity tank or something like that, right? And it leads to a more kind of gritty system, uh, more kind of realistic in a lot of ways. Um, combat is super, you know, it's it's quick and it's deadly and uh, it's like real combat. You know, it's like getting into a lot of gunfights is a good way to get yourself killed. Um, or, or, you know, getting into a lot of a lot of combat, you know, it's 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 a good way to get shot. And then the, it also, a thing that's different about Traveler is that you aren't going to get experience points from knocking off bad guys. Um, you're going to get experience from just playing in the sessions and um, or like um, just kind of hitting your goals, like hitting milestones with your characters, right? And... Um, so, yeah, and then there's no, like, oh, I'm going to be a fighter or I'm going to be a rogue. You could start out being something like you could start out being a a character who is trying to go into the scouts or, like, the Navy or something. You could wash out of the Navy and then you could end up going to prison and end up being, like, a, pris a jailhouse lawyer or something like that. That's that's another thing that Traveler is kind of famous for, is the character creation process, where um, you uh, you kind of start out with like a career, is is more like you you know you roll you roll dice to see like how your character sort of progresses like through their career and what kinds of things happen to them, and. I, I know that people people look at this like they look at the like the character creation thing and there is a level of complexity to it and it is a um, it is kind of a crunchy sort of medium crunch kind of system and I think that that can be off-putting for people because they hear about the they're like oh traveler isn't that the game where you can die in character creation? Um, yeah, it is possible. It is possible to try to die in character creation. In fact, there are, <laughs> there are different rules for if you want to do something like that, like the, um, they call it Iron Man. I don't think that in the current, like it's second edition Mongoose version. I don't think that dying in character creation, it's never happened to me. Um, I don't think that dying in character creation is quite as common as it used to be or i think that maybe that gets played up a lot but a lot of times i think that that what that actually is is that people will you start out as an 18 year old and you're fresh out of whatever high school and then you're like okay i'm gonna join the navy All right if you spend your whole life in the navy in like a career you make it you go lifer in the navy and uh you end up like your character is like 65 before they muster out um, and, and quit the Navy and, and, and begin their traveler career, the odds of getting injured or, you know, having some kind of a horrible accident and dying, they go up. But at the same time, you know, aging is part of the game and injuries and th things like that. You know, as you, as you move on through your career, like your character is going to get older and it's and it's it's much more like career based um and there is alternate rules right like if you did want to play a game where 
you you want to make your characters more heroic, right? There's an option for that. Um, you can, there's like, this is, uh, I'm just looking at, um, what is this? What is this called? Uh, the Traveler's Companion. This is one of those books, you know, it's like this is an add-on. This basically gives you some some different options as far as like character creation, like doing just a point buy. Like say that you always wanted to play a psychic and you never rolled up a psychic. You never got that option to do like a teleporter psychic or whatever. You can do a point buy. There is a point buy version. Or um, say that you wanted to do a, a horror game, right? And then you wanted to incorporate like luck and uh, sanity or, or morale or, um, you know, like, uh, like Call of Cthulhu or um, does Death in Space do that? I forget. Or um, Mothership, you know, where it's more horror based and like there's, there's sanity and there's morale and, you know, your, your characters have like a breaking point when they're hiding from the, the xenomorph or whatever, right? Um, so if you did want to play Alien, you know, Alien, that, you know, it's a great horror sci-fi game. I feel like this is going to have more crunch than Alien. If you like Alien or if you, if you want to play Alien and then you want to do more of a long-term campaign and you don't really, you know, you, there's, there's things about Alien that I don't like where I feel like it's much more suited to like one shots or like short little things. And then this is much more suited to like a sandbox game that, that spans a galaxy, you know? And then you have your characters that are space truckers that are going all over. And then there's more kind of like political stuff or there's like corporations that they have to deal with and a lot more kind of role play stuff. Um, not as, you know, combat focused or whatever. Traveler is going to be, I think it's a better, I think it's a better system. If you, if you want to play up more of the sandbox thing, if you want to play up more of the, you know, political kind of like, um, or, you know, like I want to, you know, I want to do more like kind of piloting stuff or, or if you want to play a game that's more like The Expanse or more like Firefly, um, this is the game for you, right? Where if you're, you know, you want to just play a crew that's trying to keep their spaceship in the air and they're trying to, um, you know, get the, the, the parts that they need and get things fixed and get everything everybody paid and, you know, just kind of moving from paycheck to paycheck, like adventure to adventure, flying all over the galaxy. This is the game for you, right? Um, so how does um, how does how does the the game mechanics work, right? Um, the if you look at the character sheet, right, you're gonna see there is a lot of skills here, right? And um, also, your the you know these these stats are gonna seem kind of low, right? Because um, when you're doing character creation, you're rolling three d six, and then you're just keeping those numbers. You aren't rolling, you know, you aren't dropping ones. You aren't rolling three d six or four d six, and then getting rid of one dice. It's just three d six, and then you put your you know your your stats where they are. And similarly, um, or, or different from D and D, those are those are your stats. Like period, you don't you don't level up or you don't you don't put more points into those. Um, your your base stats stay the same. Um, what you put your your level up your your points into as your character progresses is into your skills. Um, so, you know, you can get way, way better at being a gunslinger or being a pilot or being a scientist. Um, there's all kinds of things that you can learn um, in the game, you know, in your in your career. And you don't have to. It doesn't have to be 
combat focused. You could play a game that is completely focused on just being um, like traders, where you're going from one system to another, trying to get the best deals on your cargo, and then you know trying to get rich or something like that, and totally you know avoiding combat whenever it comes up. You could be the guy that's like hiding in the background in the 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 sci-fi like action movie that's trying to just not get shot, right? Um, <laughs> that's like flying the the space trucker ship to wherever. But how it's going to work is that, say that you're doing a a social role, like uh, carouse or something like carouse would be your ability to, like say, drink somebody under the table, or maybe to socialize and and uh, um, get some information out of somebody. Like you could say, okay, so you want to go to the bar and then you want to kind of talk to the locals and keep your ear to the ground and you want to figure out what's going on like why you know what why is why is this happening here and uh i know i'm from out of town but is there anything that you could tell me about this or whatever you might have the person roll there a combination of their intellect for their um uh streetwise skill like say this character right here has streetwise zero which is not nothing. It means that they're not rolling with any negatives, right? So for their streetwise, this person has, an, you would say, give me a, a combination of your intellect and your social. So this character has a, an intellect of 12, which is really good. So they have a plus two modifier and then plus their social, which is a plus zero, right? And then they do their streetwise and their carouse. So their carouse, they have no points into it. So it ends up being a, they still have a, a positive modifier, but it's like, you know, it's, it's a, it's seal based. It's a combination of different things. Or if you, you, you say like, okay, you want to jump from this rooftop and then you want to land on this other rooftop, roll me, you know, roll me your, like your your dexterity plus your um plus your your strength you know like say that they 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 make the stick the landing or or don't stick the landing say that they get a success but only barely and then they're hanging on you know they they're hanging on to that ledge and then they need to pull themselves up then you can have them roll a combination of like their strength plus their dexterity and this guy doesn't have very good strength, but he has good dexterity, right? So, um, <clears throat> yeah, the, the game is, is really different from the most of the, uh, you know, most of the, the RPGs out there. But if you, if you have played games like D&D or whatever, and then you're like, oh, okay, like we're level one, and then we can die fighting a, a pile of rats, you know, just a pack of rats. You easily get killed by them. But at level 20, I'm fighting demigods. That's never going to happen to you in this game. Um, and the, uh, as far as, like, the, the mechanics, you know, there is absolutely no power curve like that. Um, there is the situation where... You have a a character who is like an 18 year old or something who just doesn't know anything and then they come into the game and they're just like fresh and they don't they they have like no skills you know um and then you have your other character who is like i don't know like 50 or something like that and they have all this kind of like streetwise and they have their piloting skills and they you know they have some some skills under their belt there is a power curve in that regard there is a level curve in that regard but it's 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 nowhere near as significant as if you had a group of players who were level 10 or whatever in Dungeons and Dragons and then you're like okay I want to bring in this new player at level one 
there's it's just completely different it's like i'm an experienced seasoned kind of veteran at this thing you know i know what i've been doing and i'm taking on this new crewmate who is young and green and inexperienced right um that's the kind of more of the 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 power curve right the level curve um and again like at at is this you know is this high level or this this seasoned veteran character going to be able to take multiple laser blasts no never that's never going to happen especially not with some serious body armor or a tank to hide behind like an actual tank a literal tank to hide behind or get in and pilot um but so i want some of the strength some of the strengths of the system right uh some things that i love about the system is that it has been around for like i mean you know 40 about 40 yeah or no yeah over 40 years now right um this is i'm i'm just i'm on the uh traveler map and this is a this is a a a map of the known um traveler universe right each one of these is a is a you know a star system uh these these are individual star systems and planets and it's just it is a a massive massive universe um we can you know we can zoom in on so one part of the map and then we can go to this system and then it will tell me um i can pull up uh what's known about that specific world in that system and uh and then like what part of space it's in um and this is you know this is zodani and um uh, personally i don't feel like the traveler universe is the the like the the actual official universe is the strength as much as the system is because um if you learn this system um here here's 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 one reason why i think this this system is just fantastic so if i go to drive through rpg right and then i i i go into uh traveler just the 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 traveler system right um you're going to have all of the official traveler stuff right uh from mongoose and uh the the older stuff like the the, the property has changed hands a couple of times there was a, a gerps edition there was a d20 edition and there's you know there's there's different editions that are out there and um people have bought the rights to it they've bought the 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 actual property has changed hands a couple of times um but another thing is, is that um back in i want to say like 2011 or something or 2000 you know a while ago um traveler put out an an srd a standard rules document and then that um that made the system accessible for everybody so it's just basically a a base set of rules that are like copyright and royalty free and anybody can use these these srd standard rule set rules to make their own game um and there is so much stuff out there like if you wanted to to play a i mean if you wanted to play a cyberpunk game right uh i'll show you one um i i really like uh zozer games they have uh they have multiple games that they've that they've built on the traveler engine um if you wanted to play a, a solid cyberpunk game 
using this engine, you could play play this uh, Zaibatsu, and then this is a it's a uh, you know it's a a cyberpunk game built on the the two D six um, traveler engine, right? Or if you wanted to play uh, a system that is really much more inspired by a like um, uh, Alien or Blade Runner, you know, kind of like the shared Alien, Blade Runner, um, Outland, like th that universe, you could play Hostile. And then Hostile is much, much more of that kind of gritty, like space trucker, um, sleazy, greedy corporations out there in space that are doing horrible stuff to like colonists and, and blue blue collar space truckers, right? Um, and there's there's replicants and like hostile is very inspired by that kind of setting. Or if you wanted to play a um, like just use a a kind of like a modern setting. Um, like I was, I, I loved, um, the, the last of us, the, um, the, the HBO series, you know, and I thought, oh, you know, it'd be really fun to play a game that was kind of post-apocalyptic that was like, there was, um, uh, you know, a virus that came in and like wiped out a good chunk of the population. And then there's these kind of factions that are hangers on like all over the United States and um but what what you know what kind of mechanics would I use to play a game like that I think I would use this I think that I would use these this um just modern kind of uh system or it, like again like if you you know if you wanted to play I think there's a I think there's a system it's called sort of uh Cepheus, I think. Yeah, sort of Cepheus. And um, this is a, it's a, um, a 2D6, like, traveler engine-based fantasy game, where it's like sword and sorcery, like, uh, like your, your Dungeons and Dragons type game. Or I'm sure that there, somebody out there has done a a medieval version but it's this the the fact that one for for mongoose like for the official traveler actual traveler setting there is the um travelers uh travelers aid society um uh, no travelers yeah, Traveler's Aid Society, um, the, uh, the Traveler, yeah, Traveler's Aid Society is the, like, the third party thing for Traveler, where anybody can publish something for Traveler, and then put it on, put it up for sale, they can go on to drive through RPG, and then publish something under the license of the Travelers, the, the the Travelers Aid Society, and then Mongoose just takes a little cut of it. And then, you know, drive through RPG takes a little cut. So you end up getting like 60-40 split, and then 10% goes to Mongoose, and then 30% goes to drive through RPG, and then 60% goes to you, right? But this is going back for like 40 years. So there is so, so much stuff out there that has been written and tons and tons of third party stuff, which is huge because like there is just, there is such a wealth of um, like adventures that have been written that people have run that they put out there or their own systems, their own, you know, like universes or whatever that are like Traveler is more of kind of just a universal sci-fi engine than anything else. Like, I mean, I think that that was what it originally was. And then the, um, the whole like Traveler universe got kind of tacked on later on, but the original, the original Traveler engine 
was just a universal sci-fi engine to build whatever kind of game that you wanted out of it. And it still is like that. And I would say that that is like one of the, if not the biggest strengths of the game is that you can just do anything with it. And uh, like if you're, I think that if you don't like the the power curve of games like Dungeons and Dragons or whatever, where you start at level one and then you're, you know, it's, you, you get to be like godlike or whatever. And then you, if you prefer something where you're just kind of like, you have this character who it's, you know, it's more like character based and there is less of a luck mechanic, you know, with nothing, the, a dice that is so super swingy, like the swingiest dice out there, the D20, um, versus a, a dice pool system where if you've built a character a certain way, they're going to do what they're built to do the majority of the time versus just all over the place, you know, plus their modifiers or whatever, what have you, right? Um, but yeah, I think I think it it, it, it definitely has some strengths like um, it it has a huge following, right? The 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 universe is just you know it's just massive, and there is like discords, there are um, all kinds of like forums, and tons and tons of third party content, and it has a, a like if you go on Roll Twenty whatever, or if you go on to Discord, or if you go on to um, whatever online game engine that you're playing it's going to be easy for you to find a game to play in because there's a lot of people playing this game and then there's it has a really loyal following uh and i'm always surprised when i talk talk to people about this game and i tell them that it's as old as dungeons and dragons and they've just never heard of it they're just like you know like what do you mean it's like it's been around as long as dungeons and dragons has how come I've never heard of it? How come I've never seen it? Um, that might be a weakness is that uh, it's been around for so long and then it's a little bit hard to find books and stuff like that. But um, I think that an another weakness might be that it is a little bit crunchy as far as the rules go. It's like, it's it's not more crunchy than cyberpunk it's not more crunchy than shadowrun it's not more crunchy than um you know like mutant year zero or um alien or blade runner like any of those popular kind of franchises okay it's a little bit more crunchy than blade runner or mutant you know it's a little bit it's more crunchy than something like storyteller system or maybe a little bit more crunchy than i don't know like call of cthulhu or something like that but it's i think it, it has like the perfect amount of crunch <laughs> that's how i feel about it and like just as an example like if i have a certain type of spaceship you know i can um i can use uh um where's my uh Where's my high guard? Uh, uh, I can I can use my uh, you know my my high guard su supplement to make to to build a a custom spaceship right, and then I can say oh well I know exactly how much room I have in the cargo hold, and I know exactly how much um, this type of ore is worth here on this planet, and I know that. If I can get it out of here, then I can take it to this planet where they process it and turn it into electronics. And then I know exactly how much electronics I can fit inside my hold and, you know, get it out of there. Like, that's the kind of level of crunch that we're talking about. And then you can also use something like the, the Traveler map to tell you what exactly, like, things are worth in whichever system. And uh, what's going on, like if there's some kind of a war going on, 
like in the system or if there's an embargo or if there's some kind of like a viral outbreak or, you know, like something like that, if there's a quarantine going on, like things like that. I think it's just, it's a really, really great system and it's, it's crunchy in a good way. It's like, it's like the best kind of crunchy, satisfyingly crunchy instead of like, like, oh, this gives me a headache, you know, crunchy. So anyways, um, I hope you try it. I hope that, that, uh, this makes you want to check it out. And, uh, yeah, I think that that's all that I wanted to say about it. And I think that that's going to be it. And I'll see you in the next one. All right. Take care, guys. Peace.